Sachin Panda feels right at home at the Salk Institute, not just because of the prestige, but also because of Salk's unique architecture. They built this institute with big glass doors and windows. At every turn, the building emphasizes one of Panda's abiding interests, light. His lab sits two stories below ground floor, so you might think it would be dark and gloomy, but thanks to Salk's deep natural light wells, it's anything but. There is very little lab space inside, inside that's actually not brightly illuminated during daytime. Here, Panda studies circadian rhythms. He's trying to understand how an internal biological clock keeps our bodies on a steady 24-hour cycle. And he's found that light plays a crucial role, but not necessarily through vision. Even blind people have their daily rhythms regulated by light. That told us that there must be some unknown light sensor present in the eye. That light sensor is called melanopsin. Panda knows that it helps to keep the body's internal clock ticking because he once did an experiment on mice that lacked melanopsin. They could see just fine. But when Panda simulated jet lag for the mice by adjusting the time of day when they were exposed to light, things got rough. A normal mouse would readjust to the new day-night cycle within a week, and then this mouse would take almost a month to adjust. And that was really fascinating because this mouse can see perfectly fine what is around it, but the light sensor that was resetting its clock was not there. Without melanopsin, the body struggles to intuitively know when it's time to wake up and when it's time to go to sleep. That's because melanopsin helps to regulate a hormone called melatonin. It's sometimes referred to as the hormone of darkness. And there have been numerous studies showing melatonin improves sleep. High melatonin levels make us drowsy, so ideally we want less of it during the day. That's where light comes in. When light floods the melanopsin in our eyes, our body dials back on melatonin, keeping us alert. At least, that's how things should work. But the way Panda sees it, this system is getting hijacked by the typical 21st century lifestyle. Nowadays, with artificial light and with so much work to do, we constantly stay awake late into the night. We spend all day working indoors, shielded from natural light. Then we spend our nights bombarding ourselves with bright displays from TVs and laptops and smartphones. Type was frequently given away. There's actually reason to think we could be harming our health with all these wrong light signals at all the wrong times. Just look at the medical data on graveyard shift workers who live totally out of sync with the natural light cycle. What has been shown is uh, shift work predisposes to quite a few chronic diseases like obesity, diabetes, certain kind of cancers, and even dementia. But Ponta says more data is needed to really drill down on the way light affects health. So he's getting people to wear light sensors around their wrists. So this device will monitor your activity, um, and it also has a light sensor. The idea of a Fitbit for light intrigued me, so I took one of Panda's sensors home. So the whole idea is to see how much light you get exposed to during the entire day, and we'll see whether that light level will affect how you are sleeping, how much you are active, etc. And so I went about my routine, working, sleeping, running errands. Ten days later, I went back to Panda's lab to get the rundown on my light diet. Let's look at your data. Panda boots up a graph with bright yellow bars tracking my daily light exposure. The first thing I notice, I get very faint light when I'm in the office. A few yellow peaks mark my commute into and from work, but my chart is mostly dim, poorly lit valleys. There was one outlier though, a day when I worked mostly outside. You look at this day and look at the sleep that night. There is very little hand movement in bed, so that means you had a really, you were sleeping like a baby. Panda says little by little, people are becoming more conscious about the link between light and health. Light therapy mimics outdoor light. Some people now use light therapy to treat their depression. And developers are making software that filters out bright light from laptop displays at night to help the body's melatonin production. Panda says buildings should be targeted next. He'd like to see architects fill offices and other buildings with better light. People who are building these structures 
are they factoring in uh, what we are now learning from the effect of light on behavior, human behavior and health? If you can't bring workers outdoors, Ponda says maybe we can figure out a way to bring the outdoors into the workers. David Wagner, KPBS News.